Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we're going to do a should you pull on the Core and Noctis banners. And these are coming just in a few days. Uh, this is one of those events where there's like a really short turnaround between the banners. Um, so it is coming up pretty quick. So I want to talk about these banners, talk about the characters, and talk about if I think you should pull or not. So let's start with the Noctis banner. So on this banner, we're going to have Noctis, Galif, and Cater. Now something I'm going to say about this banner is this is actually a very strong banner. Um... The side characters are both really good, right? So Cater is basically, like Cater and Galif, they're both like evade tanks, right? So, and evade tanks are very, very good. Uh, Cater is very strong because she does evade countering, but also has a very powerful freeze debuff, which if you're not familiar with the freeze debuff, it makes it so that enemies basically can't gain brave, which therefore cannot hurt you. I am a huge fan of Cater. I have a lot of bias towards her as a character. I think she's fantastic. So... The side character, Cater, is really good. And then Galef, he's a cover evade tank, right? So he will cover, uh, dodge, and then do really big counters. So for, like, off-turn comps, like, yeah, this they're very strong, you guys. Like, Galef and Cater are very good units to have in your box. Now, here's the thing. They're not force characters. Um, they're LD only. Um, but for what they are, for LD only characters, they're about as good as you can get for side banner characters. So there's a lot of value here, right? And then if you're going for Noctis, he is going to be a very good damage dealer. Now, what I've been recommending, I've been having a lot of people ask me, should I pull for Noctis? Should I pull for Noctis? Because um, he's a fan favorite character, right? And he is a very good damage dealer. But what I'm going to say is this. If, you're, if your account already has like a really good damage dealer, I actually think Noctis is skippable. You don't have to have him. Um, he's a character that I think is, is more easily replaced than other characters, right? Like if you don't have Aerith, Queen, uh, you know, Core, I think those are definitely better pickups than Noctis. But if you're like a newer account and you don't have a main DPS, this is a really nice banner. Cause like I said, you're getting two really good side characters in Galoof and Cater, who I think are absolutely fantastic. Now, if you're not familiar with Noctis, what he does, um, is he does, he does have a little bit of launching in his kit. He does like his own self follow-ups and then he, his LD is very notable, his steel pirouette. And what it does is it gives the party a buff that whenever you attack an enemy, it puts your turn to before the enemy attacks. And while this buff is up, it doesn't eat up your turn count. So the Noctis is kind of like the cheat code people have used in the past that want to do like zero turn clears because you can, you can open with steel, steel pirouette. And if you can defeat the whole, like basically if you can defeat the whole mission uh, while you're in steel pirouette and only using the LD uses and then burst modes or whatever, like that's how people used to do it like in Lufenia era, right? Like zero turn clears. So that's really cool. You can keep the party in front, deal a lot of damage, stay in front of the enemy, things like that. His burst effect has always been very notable because his burst effect uh, gives him very powerful follow-ups, right? So if you have his burst effect up, you could pair him with someone like, say, Terra or Lightning who can steal a lot of turns and then he's going to be following up like crazy in between. Um, very, very cool, right? So Noctis is, is, it has a lot of really good things going for him, right? Like I said, the launching is a nice little touch. The BT follow-ups, I think, are very notable. And then the Steel Pirouette to, like, allow you to step in front of enemy turns and steal a lot of turns, right? So if you like that type of playstyle, his damage now just gets a lot better with his upgrades. His BT effect wars get better. So Noctis is definitely not a bad pickup by any means. It just depends on where your resources are and what your box looks like. Um... And someone like me, the other thing is Noctis is a fan favorite. So a lot of veterans already have them built. So you'd basically just be looking for FR. So you could look at, you know, this banner or the core banner, whichever banner you want to get his FR on, like whichever banner is better for you, you definitely could go and pull for his FR there, right? If you wanted to, uh, that's totally up to you. But if you're going to go for Noctis, I think you do want to green them because the the BT follow-ups, I think, are just a huge part of what makes him valuable. And then you, in general, I'd say you want FRs too because you want Echo, right? Like you, you guys are seeing like with this six-man fight, and when you're doing really hard content, like you really don't have room for non-Echo characters. Like you got, you want FR like everywhere. Like you just need it. So I would say go all in on Noctis if you're going to go for him, or don't go for him at all. But overall, if you guys are just wondering, like yes, this is a very strong banner you could pull on. Uh, now we got the core banner. Now, the side characters here, not nearly as strong. I would say Sync uh, is basically a throwaway. You do, Sync just isn't good. Um, Sync's whole gimmick is she does delay. She hits, quote unquote, very hard 
um, but then delays herself and doesn't get a lot of turns. Now, I say very hard in quotes because, you know, when she launched with her LD, it was very good damage, but her hitting very hard nowadays is does not compare to, like, a modern character. So now are you not only doing mediocre damage, but you're delaying yourself and not getting a lot of turns. Just not, not that good, right? Now, later on, when she actually gets her proper, you know, Force Echo BT, I'm sure her damage is going to be absolutely insane. It's got to be top tier. And then Sisney is a character you'd pair with like a turn manipulator to get her more turns and really abuse that insane damage. But right now, you're not going to use Sync at all. We'll just say that right now. Uh, now, Gao, I think, is a nice character. They they did put a lot between the two banners. They did give us a lot of a nice side banner characters. Gao, I would say, is a, the definition of a good side banner character for an LD only character. I really like Gao. He is a... Uh, uh, how would I say it? I wouldn't really say a counter tank, but he is a counter character, right? So he doesn't really do tanking, but he double counters anytime anybody in the party is attacked. So Gao is known for pairing with other tanks very, very well. So you could pair Gao with like uh, Gladio is a really nice pairing because Gladio can cover tank and then Gao always counters if anybody's attacked. So the, the problem with having too many tanks on a team is that a lot of tanks, like they need to be hit. So the problem is, is that they try to hog attacks. Like if you have too many lock characters, well, only one of them can get hit at a time. But you could take a character. So like doing Rubicante and Gladio on a team doesn't necessarily work because only one of them can ever get hit and get the counter unless it's an all attack, right? Well, Gao, Gao kind of solves that. So you could pair Gao with, say, Rubicante. And if Rubicante is getting hit, Gao will still counter along with Rubicante. And what makes Gao so good, even though his damage isn't crazy, by getting two counters, if you're doing an FR gauge that upticks on every counter attack, Gao's going to be double ticking for you. So, you know, the reason they put him here is he works really good with like Core's FR because Core's FR is one of the first original like counter tank FRs. So you put Core, uh, Gao, and then say Gladio on a team um, or Rubicante and you're just countering for days and you're uptaking the gauge, right? Uh, Gao doesn't work with Rubicante's FR because you have to do fire damage and Gao, Gao does earth damage. But if you do Gladio's FR that doesn't require an element, then you could have Rubicante and <laughs> Gao on a team and go crazy. So Gao definitely is a nice pickup. So he strengthens the banner. It's just Sync is kind of a throwaway. But I really like Gao for that counter. And Gao is one of these counter characters that heals as well. So he's healing off turn. I really, really, really love that. So Gao is a nice pickup for a side character. And then we have Kor. Kor, I would say, is one of my top characters of the month overall. He's a character that I think if you don't have him, I think he's a character that everybody needs to have in their box. Kor is an example of one of these characters, kind of like Pinello and Luna Freya, where players who did not get them initially are always asking me, when are they coming back? When are they coming back? They're so good. I want them. Uh, you, you need to get them now. If you're watching this video, you have a chance to get him. Uh, you want to get Kor. Core is one of the best follow-up attackers in the game. Um, so what he does is he'll like link to a character and give them a buff called Oath of Absolute Defense, which makes it so they can't be broken. And then with his EX, he gets his own version of the buff on himself. So the idea with Core is two of your three characters in the party always cannot be broken. And then anytime that character attacks or is attacked, he follows up. And then if he himself is attacked or he attacks, he follows up. And so if the enemies do an all attack, and they're attacking two of the characters, then he's going to follow up twice before the enemy even attacks, which is really nice because he can break the enemy. Like the enemy could be like pink numbers about to kill you. Well, he'll trigger before they attack, brave shave them down, maybe even break them out of turn, right? And then he saves you and then you can't be broken, which is super, super good. Now with Core, there was an exploit because the way his Oath of Absolute Defense works is if you put it on another character, it'll take the buff off of a different character that had it. Well, there was an exploit where like, I could put Oath of Absolute Defense on a character, swap them out for a friend, put Oath on the other character, and since my main character that had it was off screen, it wouldn't get removed from them, and they could come back and you could have it on all three characters, right? Well, what Core's BT effect does is it just allows you to do it naturally. It just says, if you have Oath of Absolute Defense on, you, you won't lose it if you give it to another character. So the, the burst effect, you're going to get, once again, good burst auras. But then the whole party will have Oath of Absolute Defense and he's going to follow up on everybody. So then what happens is anybody that attacks, he'll follow up first. And then enemies, if they do all attacks, Core is going to swing three times before the enemy goes. And once again, this is three separate ticks on the FR gauge, right? So like if you're doing this with like, say, uh, let's say you're doing this with Rubicante and Gao. I think Core, Rubicante, and Gao, that needs to be a video. So... 
the hypothetical situation is this. Core's got BT effect up. Enemy does all attack. Core does three follow-ups. Rubicante does two follow-ups if he's got his BT effect. And Gao does two follow-ups. So you're doing what? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, wait, five, seven. Yeah, you're doing seven counter-attacks per enemy all attack, which means that's that's seven ticks to Core's FR. Absolutely insane. So we, we definitely are going to be doing some fun videos with that. It's going to absolutely blow up fights. Uh, so yeah, Core is just so amazing. Um, and, and so it's not even just Core doing follow-ups, Core's Oath of Absolute Defense, his synergy with like any team comp to be so good. We know how powerful off turn is, but the fact that his FR condition is one of the best ones for a defense comp, uh, it's just crazy. So I can't recommend Core enough. He's going to be so good. Now, he's a character that veteran players probably already have because he's been busted ever since. He was like a really hype global first. So like everybody got him. And then if you miss that, the next time he came around, everybody got him. Because he's a character that every time he comes back, every content creator is like screaming, get Core. He's so freaking good. He's amazing. You got to have him. So the only players that won't have Core are like newer players. And you got to get him. He's so good. Um... So yeah, I, I, I just can't recommend this guy enough. Now, if you're a veteran player, like a lot of us are, this is what I'm kind of getting at, you probably already have them built and only need the BT, right? So if you have your BT tokens, this is one of the best places to use them this month because you could basically get his BT and you're done because you would already have his FR from the last time if you pulled it. That's the situation I am. So I'm going to BT token out. Don't have to summon on the banner at all. The unfortunate thing for me is I do kind of want Noctis FR. So I may end up, I'm hoping maybe on a free pull, I just get Noctis FR. Um, because you can see I've already got Noctis BT. So I potentially will full invest my Noctis if I get the FR and make him look really good and just have like another good powerhouse on my team. So anyways, guys, there's a lot of value to these banners. I am not going to lie. I would not blame you for going in on one, if not both of these banners. The side characters are so good here. Other than Sync, like every character here is a W. Like these are all great characters. So I cannot blame you all one bit for going in on these banners, but I would say prioritize Core over Noctis. I know there's a lot of Noctis fans out there. I know you guys want the damage, but dude, Core's going to bring the damage. Oh, I didn't even mention Core has rainbow numbers. So yeah, he can do rainbow numbers too, which is really, really good. So uh, anyways, guys, let me know if you're going to pull or not. Uh, I'm definitely going to token my, my boy up and then hopefully on the free pulls, uh, get me that Noctis FR. So anyways, thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.